I have no idea where this will lead us, but I have a definite feeling it will be a place both wonderful and strange. Especially over the past year or so, I feel incredibly fortunate to have been able to immerse myself in some of the most creme de la creme narrative fiction that I couldn't have imagined existed beforehand. This has gone tenfold for TV shows, which I've only discovered the possibilities of the medium very recently. Some of my favorite recent discoveries include the mind-bending thinking man's entertainment that is devs by Ex Machina creator Alex Garland, some weirdly underappreciated and slept on shows such as Breaking Bad and Succession, and some TV classics on either extreme of realism, from the painstakingly accurate streets of The Wire all the way up to the funky space jazz of Cowboy Bebop. I love all of these shows for their brilliant, expansive writing and unexpected emotional beats, but none of them have connected with me personally as much as two particular titles, one of which is my new favorite comedy show, and the other my all-time favorite. Eventually I'll get around to making a video about Nathan for you, but for now let's talk about my favorite show show, which has become Twin Peaks. What makes Twin Peaks personal, for me personally, is its conflation of a few elements that resonate with my own life experience and artistic taste. These are also the elements that I think make the show good. One of these is its location. I grew up in Alberta, Canada, which is basically a big field with some mountains on the side and forests in the north. A large portion of my childhood was spent in and around these forests and mountains. Because of this, I haven't really seen that many movies or TV shows represent the place where I grew up. Just northern forests in general are pretty rare in popular media that aren't survival stories. Which is a shame, because this is fucking beautiful. Twin Peaks takes place in Washington, which is just a 12 hour drive from where I spent a large portion of my life. I didn't exactly grow up in a small secluded town in Washington, but it's close enough to be nostalgic. The towering coniferous trees, the large bodies of water, the fishing culture, even the small town aesthetic. These are all elements of a setting that I have a huge amount of nostalgia and love for. The same way I imagine some people might feel about movies like Fargo, Lady Bird, or Paris, Texas. Anybody who's seen the place where they grew up represented artistically knows how gratifying it is when they get it right. This gratification is amplified by the main character's unfiltered childlike appreciation for the setting itself. Look at that! Ducks on the lake! So, Fill me in on Leo Johnson. By the way, this guy, Special Agent Dale Cooper, is probably most definitely my favorite character in fiction, but we'll get to that later. For now, I'll say that his observations of the beauty of Twin Peaks always feel like a personal validation for something very close to my heart. For my artistic taste, I tend to not like picking favorites when it comes to genre because genre is just a way to categorize a movie and I haven't found a film in any one of those categories that I didn't like. But if you held me at gunpoint and asked what my two favorite genres were, I would be very confused. Don't you just want my money? What kind of weird kink is this? Then I'd realize that this is all a dream. But who is the dreamer? And tell myself murder mystery and character drama. Fundamentally, Twin Peaks is a murder mystery and a character drama. These two elements mean that the show must consistently keep up the strength of two things, which are the plot developments of the mystery, the constant stream of questions being posed and resolved at a satisfying but still tantalizing pace, and the strength of its characters, how interesting they are, both individually and in interaction with others, along with our emotional connection to them how strongly we feel about their fictional lives. Twin Peaks is one of the strongest murder mysteries and character dramas I've ever seen. In my opinion, when you strip everything down, one of the strongest genres in fiction is the murder mystery. It's reliably engaging because of how simple it is. 
something bad happened, and one of the characters here did it. We will give you clues, we will misdirect you, and at the end, based off those clues, we will tell you who did it. And all along the way, there's always the risk of it happening again. When done right, it's storytelling at its most engaging, because you have to catch every bit of information that might be important because you want the mystery solved, but mostly because you care about how that might affect the characters. You could even actually put the pieces of the puzzle together if you were smart enough. I am very bad at solving murder mysteries, but even if you're someone who is good at that stuff, Twin Peaks has got you covered. Because the story is so good that I'm pretty sure you will never do that. The solution will present itself at the end and it will seem evident, even if it wasn't just before the reveal. I was skeptical going into Twin Peaks because David Lynch, who co-created the show, has a reputation for unresolved, ambiguous narratives. The movies of his that I've seen would set up some of the most interesting atmosphere and questions I've ever seen in anything, along with the most frustratingly vague narratives. As much as I love David Lynch, I'm the kind of guy who likes it when a story has an ending. I don't want to think about the movie and find my own interpretation of it. It's like a lot of work. It looks like we're 100% certain that we're not sure. So I expected his show to be one with a lot of questions, but no answers. A murder mystery directed by this guy sounded like it could have been hell. Luckily, it seems that either the co-creator of the show, Mark Frost, or maybe the confines of network TV may have reeled him in. As the most interesting aspects of David Lynch, his knack for visualizing dreams and the unconscious, stays in the show, along with the satisfying plotting of a murder mystery at its most gripping. A big part of what makes Twin Peaks unique is this fascination with the unconscious parts of ourselves. It adds an extra level of mystery and eeriness, when the supernatural in the fictional narrative is also somewhat supernatural to our real life experience. From my very limited understanding, even in modern science we have not been able to figure out our own consciousness. Every night we go to completely different worlds where there seems to be no limit on possibility, and abstractions become meaningful interpretations of our lives, and then we wake up and forget about most of it. And that's just a normal part of our lives. It's nothing more than completely fucking insane. It's also just cool how they weave in the unconscious with the narrative structure of the murder mystery. How dreams become a tool to solve crime. That's just cool. My dream is a code waiting to be broken. Break the code, solve the crime. Break the code, solve the crime. Along with my fondness for murder mysteries, I also love network narratives, which is any story where we've got a big cast of personalities who follow separate story arcs and crisscross and meet one another. It goes without saying that these types of stories work best with characters who are genuinely interesting in different ways, but I said it anyway. The characters in Twin Peaks are among the most dynamic and interesting I've ever seen. As a counterpoint to the manifestations of evil in the show, Twin Peaks is a story about people loving each other and caring for one another. Whenever something bad happens, we care, not only because these characters are fleshed out and flawed with their own unique personalities and goals, but because we know that one character's pain is also the pain of another one. They're also all pretty hot, so that's cool. Another show I watched and loved recently is Ted Lasso. One of my favorite elements of that show was repeated in this one. In each show, the lead character seems to embody a philosophy that'd be worthwhile to replicate. They are the fictional embodiments of genuine, good, virtuous people. Exemplary, fictitious role models. I'm trying to keep this spoiler free, but frankly, it's impossible to make a video about my love for Twin Peaks without mentioning Dale Cooper. I gotta warn you. Albert's lacking in some of the social niceties. Nobody's perfect. Isn't that the truth? All right. <laughs> There are a lot of lessons to be taken from the character of Dale Cooper. The respect he shows for everyone he meets. His dedication and professionalism for his work and boyish enthusiasm for his interests. His unabashed admiration for things that are both beautiful and strange. The character is so well thought up and so perfectly executed for being the lead of a TV show. Grounded in stoicism, enthusiasm, and the never-ending struggle to be a better person, it's a rare case when a flawless character works so well. I know it might sound dumb, but Dale Cooper actually inspires me to be a better person. A 
11 minutes in on a video about my love for Twin Peaks, and I haven't even mentioned that score. Those first few notes of the intro are seared into my brain. Twin Peaks has an almost constant undercurrent of dreamy synth under almost every conversation scene. The score is always beautiful. It effortlessly switches between motifs that are the auditory emotion of pure love. I almost told you I loved you then. Funky mischief. Audrey, there's something you'd like to tell me. There is. Or haunting a noble evil. On the topic of music, it's only fitting to talk about mood. Maybe my main reason for loving Twin Peaks is on top of everything I've just mentioned. The nostalgic location, the gripping murder mystery, the fascination with the unconscious, the dynamic characters, Dale Cooper, and the memorable score, is that the entire show is imbued with this intense mood. Something that I can only describe as a whirlpool of fascination, obsession, strangeness, and feeling. I love it when a movie or a show can genuinely make me feel uncomfortable. There's so much entertainment that I'm just completely apathetic towards. So when something as bizarre and fun as Twin Peaks comes along, I can't help but love it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. 